man, I sent out an SOS and nobody came. <laughs> and then I had a roommate who robbed me and I had all my cash liquid and he robbed me while I was at work. And no way. Out. Yes. Took all my rent money. So they kicked me out of my apartment. And then the next day, my girlfriend dumped me. <laughs> oh, my God. So I was undiagnosed bipolar and ADHD at the time. And so, oh. you know, I had issues that I didn't understand. So that brings you to a situation today where you have nothing. Nada. <laughs> nada. Absolutely nada. <laughs> I like to dig my holes with spoons, not shovels. Yeah, but you're still digging <laughs> holes. Well, that's why I'm here, right? That's right. <laughs> Welcome to Finance Action, the show where we take action. My name is Roman, and today I am with TJ. TJ, how are you doing? Oh, doing okay, doing okay, thriving and surviving. <laughs> let's go. All right, TJ, let's look at your profile. You are 26 years old. You're originally from Sunnyside, Washington. You currently live in Yakima, Washington as well, and you work as a Taco Bell. Let's go. All right. Looking at the way you've rated your personal finances from chilling to mayday, Ladies and gentlemen, you rated yourself as Mayday. What the heck is going on? Man, I sent out an SOS and <laughs> nobody came. <laughs> I'm pretty f***. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, TJ, like kind of what's going on, man? Well, I uh, went through a pretty rough spot here for the last couple months, you know, started a new job, obviously not the best job in the world, mm -hmm. but now that I'm actually working again and trying to get everything in order, I just realized how bad, yeah. <laughs> how bad everything is and how bad it got. Okay. So I'm here looking to maybe work through that today with you. Okay. You had a bad relationship that led to bad outcome. What happened? Well, see, what happens with me is I get comfortable financially. I start getting everything figured out, you know, get the credit score up, start building accounts, and then get comfortable enough to where I want to introduce a relationship to the mix, you know, okay. another variable. But, you know, so it always goes good at first. That's true. But after a while, you know, those, those extra finances you're dumping into that, especially if it's toxic, Oy. especially if it's toxic. What did you just, find as toxic? Being someone with bad habits and then dating someone with bad habits. Oh, I see. Together, you know, ends up having a lot of money go out the door. What would you spend your money on? Lots of bar trips, lots of fancy dinners, you know, oh. trips to Florida and stuff like that. You know, I went to Universal and Vegas <laughs> last year. I see. I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so you're no longer with this person? No. Nope. Okay, no, and sir. so at the end of this relationship, you found yourself completely broke? I was ass out. I had, um, I had a roommate. I had my own apartment, a really okay. nice apartment in West Valley, 1000 a month. I was doing good. Nice. And then I had a roommate who robbed me, and I had all my cash liquid, and he robbed me while I was at work. And no way. Out. Yes, took all my rent money. So they kicked me out of my apartment. And then the next day, my girlfriend dumped me. <laughs> oh, my God. How long have you known your roommate for that he did that? I've known my roommate since high school. I had known my roommate at the time. At the time, what? my roommate since high school. Yep. And did you confront him? Well, he left. <laughs> he just dipped to Seattle. <laughs> oh. From Yakima to Seattle. Just overnight, I showed up one night and all of his stuff was gone and all my money was gone. Whoa. Okay. Um, but I mean, so so you mentioned originally you also had bad habits. Yes. Like, wh what do you mean by yourself most, had most bad habits? Most of the time too? with me, it was the alcohol. Oh. <laughs> Going to the bar, you know, especially at, at the time I was working as a manager at Buffalo Wild Wings. I put in a lot of work every night. Nice. So when I was off, you know, I wanted to get a little buzz going before I went home or else I'd have a hard time settling down. Mm. Now, obviously, that took on a life of its own most of the time and led to excessive amounts of money being dumped into, you know, bar trips or a six pack at the mini mart every night. Oof. And it just got out of hand. <laughs> I see. So that alcohol, how long did you have that alcohol behavior for? So the alcohol got really bad, I want to say, after I turned 21, <laughs> unironically, <laughs> before I had had, you know, my stints where I'd, you know, drink pretty mm. heavy for a week and then not drink for months. Okay. And then once I turned 21 and then Free the pandemic all. hit, it was like, 
Yeah, it was around the same time. I think I was 22 when the pandemic officially like started. I so see. what do you do? You're cooped up in the room all day. I was getting 700 a week from my job at the time. So, I mean, I didn't think about it. I was just going throwing money away. Wow, I see. And so that brings you to a situation today where you have nothing. Nada. <laughs> nada. Absolutely nada. <laughs> we are negative, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, 26 years old with nothing, my friend. This nothing. is tough, huh? Yep. Just a, it's a little embarrassing, you know, but... <laughs> mm, okay. Gotta get it figured out eventually. Walk me through the emotions that you were feeling. So I was undiagnosed bipolar and ADHD at the time. And so, oh. you know, I had issues that I didn't understand. I see. You know, and there's no way to work through what you don't understand. So that's where I was trying to fill that that void, you know, going and buying beer or, you know, tons of fast food or, you know, other stuff on the side. Yeah. Just to try and... <laughs> But once I was diagnosed, it made a lot more sense. And that's when my finances started getting better is when I got in and got medicated. But that's a whole nother. Yeah, that's another <laughs> topic. Okay. But at its core, you mentioned at some point you were financially strong. Yes. That was after I was medicated. <laughs> oh, you had everything. Everything changed. Everything changed once I got on the right meds, man. Oh, I see. And then the bad relationship hits. And yep, I went through a really tough breakup. And then I uh, slept through my doctor's appointment and my doctor dropped me. And I've been, I haven't found a doctor since then. So so right now you're not on medication. Right now I'm not on any of the meds. And I, I think that's part of the problem. <laughs> I see. So look, guys, it is interesting to understand the root cause of the issues because people that come in on this show, it's not just about looking at numbers and transactions. I really want to understand how do you come up to those decisions, okay? And know that I'm not coming here judgmental. My goal here is to make sure that by the time you leave our discussion, you have a plan in hand that you can get yourself back on your feet, okay? If this is a type of topic or subject that you guys are interested, looking at the variety of cases that we look at, we invite you to please like and subscribe as we are still a ramping up new channel. This really tremendously helps us out, so we count on you for that. Back to our topic, and let's look right away at our first segment here that looks at income and your assets. You know, we generally start with the income, but this time let's look at your assets. <laughs> so my friend, looking at your checking account, you have minus two dollars. Yep. This is my only asset right now, a C4. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> okay, that All right. And then looking at your saving account, what do you have? Uh, negative 15. Negative 15 dollars. Okay. Uh, do you have any other assets? Um, nope. <laughs> do you have a car? I do not have a car. Nope. Do you have any investment accounts? No, sir. Retirement accounts? No, sir. We are butt naked out here. <laughs> you have nothing. Nothing. <laughs> How do you manage the pressure, the financial pressure of this situation? Well, it's already hard to handle day-to-day -day situations, especially not being on the meds that I need to be on. Mm -hmm. So honestly, the pressure from that end of things is way more pressure than the financial pressure. I know oh. that I have food in my fridge. I know I have a roof over my head. Like I'm walking distance to work. So having those basic necessities, it is, it's not as much pressure as you would think, especially trying to battle your mental side every day. You know what I mean? I see. But still looking at your finances today, my friend, in terms of cash that you have in hand, uh, well, you own the bank $17. <laughs> You ever lost money on a savings account? Because I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's let's bring it back here because we are going to find a solution. Okay. Let's do it. Let's start with your income. Income. How much do you make working at Taco Bell? Seventeen dollars an hour, right now. Seventeen an hour. Yes, okay. Sir. How many hours do you work? Uh, about forty. Forty hours. Yes, okay. Sir. So that brings your yearly pre-tax income. So your annual income to 32,640, okay? Okay. 
So if we compare that against the median in the United States, 50% of the population makes more, 50% makes less. For the age bracket between 25 and 34 years old, which you are in at 26 years old, it is 51,000, okay? Mm -hmm. So you are quite below the median. You're in the lower 50%. What the, where does that bring you? Well, per month, I'm assuming, looking at tax and so on, you probably net around 1,900 per month. Is that fair? Yes, sir. That's okay. pretty accurate. Do you have any other streams of income? Um, I do some promotion on the side, just oh, okay. doing legwork, you know, putting up posters and stuff. It's not it's not a huge amount, but I can make, you know, quick 50 bucks a day in a few hours putting up posters and doing stuff like that. So it's not anything major. But so what, like $100 a month? A month, I want to say probably about 250 300 250 Okay, let's be a conservative. Let's bring you at 250 Okay. So that brings your monthly net, TJ, at 2150 That's fair? That's fair. Okay. Now that we have a good understanding of your financial situation, let's look a little bit at your spending, okay? <laughs> No. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Can't we just leave that part out of the video? <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at your expenses and your debt. Okay, so starting first with your expenses, let's look at one that's pretty straightforward. Yes, your rent. How much do you pay for rent per month? I don't pay any rent right now. What do you mean? I stay with the guy that I know from the bar. <laughs> no way. Yeah, because I was, after I lost my apartment, I had no options and my credit was crap. How that much? What is your money. credit score right now? My credit score right now is four ninety two. Woo! Yeehaw, cowboy! <laughs> and you used to be at seven hundred. I used to be at seven hundred, and that was a year and a half ago. No way! That yes. fast? Yes. Yes. What brought it down that fast? <laughs> I used up all my balance on all my credit cards, so my revolving utilization went through the roof. It's over a hundred percent right now, oh. and that tanked it. Absolutely tanked it. Wow! Like, Were you making payments on those cards? I was up until a couple months ago. I'd, I've now recovered, and I kept the card open. And I, I barely saved it by the skin of my teeth. Um, but having that <laughs> revolving utilization so high for so long tanked that credit score, man. It was bad. <laughs> I see. So what uh, TJ here is referring to, and just for the interest of the audience, Absolutely. is credit card utilization, okay? Generally, what we want to see is less than 30% by the time the statement closes. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a $1,000 credit limit on your credit card, right? Well, you use it up and down, up and down during the month. By the time the statement closes, you want to have a balance that is less than $300, Okay, that means a credit utilization of less than 30%. But that doesn't mean that you want to carry that balance for the next month. No, no, no. You pay it in full credit companies. They are looking for that. And what you're mentioning here is that not only did you max your credit cards out, as you mentioned, over 100, so your unrevolved credit. Yep. On top of that, you do not pay your minimum payments, neither the full amount, that's the next level. Mm -hmm. And that drastically impacts all the components of your credit score, yep. including you know, late payments, credit utilization, mm -hmm. history of, uh, on, on your credit score. So, so that kind of has a tremendous impact. This is an interesting um, component for you as you're thinking about building your credit score. Okay, so coming back to this. Yes, sir. So you're paying zero. Zero. How long has it been? Uh, it's been about two months now. Okay. You it's think you can hold now. it for a bit longer? Or I can't. I think I can. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, are you helping? It's not, I am. I am helping around the house, and we have a dog there that I take care of when he's not there. So it's okay. like it's a it's a trade your time for rent type of situation, so that he doesn't always have to be home to let the dog out. I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's yeah. not super expensive. Anyway, in general, I believe the apartment's only like six seventy five a month. Oh, so I see. It makes it easier. Oh, but you but you've met him multiple times. I had met before him before a couple times. <laughs> and you said, "Oh, only, I'm only a couple times." I had just lost my apartment. It was the day before I moved out, and I was sol. So I went to the bar to go get a drink and sat there and had a drink with him. He's like, "If you need a place to stay." You can come stay with me for a little bit. <laughs> He's wow. like, I need help with my dog. And I didn't know the dude, like, for Jack. 
<laughs> it was a couple times at the bar with the dude, man. I see. Okay. Shot in the dark, yeah. <laughs> Shot in the dark. I mean, right now it's uh, definitely helping you out. Absolutely. Uh, you I am would super be... grateful. Super, super grateful. Okay. So looking at your housing uh, expense against your income, 0%, no-brainer. Okay. Hopefully we don't want to milk this situation for no, too long. absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Uh, it's kind of a temporary placement as you build yourself back. Yes, sir. Getting back on the feet. Okay, TJ, let's move on to your car expenses. And you mentioned you don't own a car. No. You just walk. I just walk. Okay. Yep. Uh, you have a driving license? Yes, sir. Okay. Not one and you used to have a car, you mentioned. Yes. And all the cars that I've had, I paid off within a few months. So. Wow. What a turn of events huh, for Dude, you. Dude, it's, huh? Yeah. Bipolar disorders, no joke. <laughs> Up and down. <laughs> Sorry, as I am um, learning through this as well. So when you say bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. how does that translate financially? So generally, it's in intervals of low and high, right? Okay. So for a week, I'll be in super, super happy, just riding a high almost. And I'm really good with my finances when I'm stable like that. But the other shoe always drops. There's always that week or two or maybe even a whole month of the low period. Mm -hmm. And during that low period is when I ramp up the drinking, the eating, the smoking, like everything ramps up and that costs more money. <laughs> uh, generally, those bad stretches last longer than the good ones. So it's hard to really get a grip. So you're always cycling it's, in and out. And that breaks you after a while. Going up and down like that, it brings a level of shame because you've been up. So having to constantly climb back up that hill is just demoralizing. What has been the process of you not being able to find another doctor to help you out? Well, see, my parents' insurance, it cuts off your, I mean, most people's parents' insurance cuts off at 26. My dad's a union carpenter. That was really good insurance. I could get on anywhere. Now I'm on state insurance mm -hmm. and that's fluctuating between two different brackets because I make too much for the low one, mm. but sometimes I don't make enough for that second tier. So <laughs> it leaves my uh, health insurance in limbo mm -hmm. and most places, you know, that accept state insurance They have waiting lists out, you know, two, three, four months. And that's not a joke. <laughs> and does Taco Bell provide you any health insurance? They do not, no. Not unless I'm a manager, which I'm currently working on, so. Uh, so you find yourself in a limbo. Correct. Mm. And again, it's hard to get that giddy up and go to go find one, too, when you're constantly... <laughs> Swinging. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Okay. Okay, now I'm getting to the root of it. I understand a little bit more. Um, as I actually look into some of your spending behaviors. Let's actually go straight into this. All right. um, in. So, my friend, you are insane on Minimart. I see 16 transactions last month on Minimart, dude. Yes, and those sir. are like... $27, $28, it's more or less the same every every other day. You go there, what, what do you buy there? Most of the time, it's the same thing. Get a 12-pack of beer, a couple of barbecue rib sandwiches, and a pack of smokes. <laughs> oh, you smoke too? <laughs> yes, sir. Ay, 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 not yeah. as heavy as I once did. Not really cigarettes anymore, but yep, that's a demon I've been running away from too. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, 16 <laughs> transactions. I mean, that's crazy. It's almost 500 bucks per month. Asinine. <laughs> Dude, you're that's making crazy. a thousand. You're making two grand a month. You're spending one fourth of your salary on shit. Yep. But not only that, you also go. Pretty strongly on your bars at Gaming Grog. What is this? 38, 40, 45, 35. Yeah, they're not cheap at the bar. That's why I just so try to stick to the, the bar mini too? Oh. I do if the, I do the bar for the socialization, which is not the greatest way to socialize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 40 bucks that you're uh, cranking. <laughs> huh? You're not uh, sipping uh, grenadine. Like three huh? shots of Pendleton now. It's expensive. <laughs> Holy smokes, dude. But not when you have minus $25 on your account. Uh, <laughs> Come on, man. If it comes out, it sells. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but seriously. And then and then White River, $285. What is this shit? Oh, the White River Amphitheater. Yeah, I went to a concert. Oh. And that, those drinks are super expensive. And that's how we I paid the person back who took me to the concert, you know. $285. $280. Dude, it's expensive. Talking $16 for a can of beer. 
Dude, you have, you have, you have minus 15 on your account and you're pulling those. at that time. <laughs> Yeah, and you don't yeah. exactly look at, you know, each individual transaction until you look at your, <laughs> your statements and then you're like, Correct. what the heck? Correct. Because, I mean, let's look together at some of the rest of your expenses. You don't have much going on. No. Most of your spend is on cigarettes, alcohol, and on supermarket sandwiches. <laughs> that's all you do? No, but that's all you do. I mean, as of now, yeah. And like I said, it's pretty shameful, but at the same time, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, we need to get it figured out. We need to figure this out ASAP because... Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, yeah. I mean, it's it's very interesting situation because it is so intertwine, intertwined with the mental health component. Yes. Of it. Because you are very confident that if you're able to get back into a stable level, then you should be able to get back your finance in order. Correct. Because you seem to have the knowledge. The proof is in the pudding, man. I've done it before. Like, I've been stable before, which when I hear stuff like you just said about the spending habits and stuff, it brings a level of shame to me. But at the same time, I'm the one making these decisions, knowing full and well what decisions I have to make, just not executing. And I, I can't see. blame it all on the mental health because I'm still making these decisions consciously. But I feel like it would bring a certain level of consistency back into the picture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because right now, not only do you spend quite a bit, my friend, on unnecessary expenses, but you've also stacked up quite a bit of debt and not the good debt, DJ. No, Credit card debt. debt. No. No. <laughs> No, no, the worst. No. I mean, almost the worst. <laughs> almost the worst. I mean, I like mm. <laughs> money tree. Uh, I mean, uh, payday oh loans and all oh that yeah. crap. Don't even touch that. Huh? That's I, the, I, I used to do payday loans back. No then. way. I did, but I stopped. I always paid them no. on time. I just, oh, I, no. I haven't touched them in six years. So don't even think <laughs> that it exists. This is the worst of the worst. Is is yeah. you are going to end on the street and you need a place to stay at night? Maybe you take it, but that's that's <laughs> the extreme at least. That's crazy. Oh yeah, I wouldn't take it for anything other than something wow. ultra extreme. Personally, the debt on payday loan is almost it's ridiculous. 400 interest. It's, it's ridiculous. What crazy dude. It's ridiculous. It's insane. Okay, so I'm glad to see that on the positive, you don't have payday loan. It's not the case of everyone. We had people coming here that had payday loans. <laughs> nope. <coughs> Dodge that bullet. <laughs> yeah. But uh, credit card number one, you have a debt of $2,700. Yes, sir. With an interest rate of 28%. Uh, <laughs> your minimum payment is 433 Okay. What I'm glad to see is at least you've not stacked up more in the recent month. Right. So you've just let it ride. Correct. Right. So it's nice, at least you're not... Uh, I guess you can't really stack more if it's already a higher than 100% auditization. Right. You have another credit card here, $800 at 18% interest, minimum payment, 274 Okay, so that brings your total debt right now, as you've been providing to us, to $3,500. Looking at the rest of your expenses, do you have any pets? I do not have any pets. Okay, how much do you pay for fun? For my phone, it's going to be about 65 a month. Oh, Not okay, that's a little bit steep. Huh? Do you buy the phone with that? I, well, I do it through Metro PCS, which is a pay by month through T-Mobile. Okay. Just to keep the cost a little lower so I don't run my data up and accrue like a bunch of charges on top of... I, that's uh, how I keep the damage control. I so see. So it's just one set price every month. And I know that's the price it's going to be every month. I see. So you are a type of person that needs to have almost an automatic control. I need consistency with the bills or anything else or else I'll forget about them uh, because they just overwhelm me. You know what I, I mean? I see. So you are definitely not good with credit cards. No, no, not at all. So you should not touch any future credit card until at least you are being more balanced. Correct. Okay, because they give yep. you that freedom and then you rock and roll on it. Yeah, nice. and sometimes they don't stop it when the balance is up. So I've had times, months where they'll run it up four or five hundred under <laughs> and oh, just keep wow. it open. Oh my god. I see. Okay. Do you have any other debt? 
No. No, sir. No personal loans? Nope. I tend to pay those off quick because I don't like having to owe people money. Okay. I feel like that's when my funds are, instead of going to my credit card, are going to people that I'm borrowing petty cash from. Okay. So I try and stay away from that. But if I do do it, it's paid off within the week usually. Okay. That's good to see. Student loans? No student loans. Do no, you have sir. any education? Any bachelor anything? I have college credit, even though I've never enrolled in a college. I got my GED after being out of high school for like four years, and I got 90 percentile on all four of them. So that's how I got that college credit. Wow. Do you still have those college credits? Yes, I do. Yep. Have you ever considered education? <laughs> Honestly, no. I've never been stable <laughs> enough to really... Mm. And when I was stable, I was comfortable, so I didn't feel like... Yeah, I going to step it. up. You know what I mean. So, so what I mean by that? Why am I so like, you know, uh, why am I thinking that hard about education? Is because in certain aspects, education can provide you with exit options. It's a, it's an investment. You know, I love people that are going to education, following a passion, and so on. Right. And I don't criticize on that. Okay. But at its core, it's an investment that you're making that needs to have a return. So when you go into a coding school, you want to become a software engineer. When you go into a business school, you want to you know, become X. When you go into a more artsy school, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to justify an exit. However, it's possible and many people have made it. But that's why I, I always want to say maybe education could be interesting for you not writing $150,000 worth of student debt forget right. about that but a thoughtful education could increase your earning potential okay it brings you into the next level you know uh, than just kind of remaining within that surviving you know vibe here it can potentially bring you to a profession that gives you a greater income so we'll be thinking about that let me think about that when uh, we're going to look through our recommendation section. But right now, as we are thinking together, you don't have any other debt than those two BS credit cards. No, sir. Just that. Okay. Okay. So that is not great. But that is not too, too bad neither. And what I mean by that is we've seen people that, although they have maybe two or three grand on their account, they have 60 grand of freaking credit card debt on the back. I like to dig my holes with spoons, not shovels. Yeah, but you're still <laughs> digging holes. Well, that's why I'm here, right? That's right. Okay. So I have a good understanding here of what is going on around your situation. So that brings me then together, uh, TJ, to my next segment, which looks at... The money case. I want to bring realization to you almost as an intervention. Okay. How much would you be paying on interest if you were to continue carrying those credit card debt that you've now carried for months? Okay. So, my friend, while the amount is not excessive, you only have about $3,500 worth of debt. Correct. If you were to maintain that, you would be spending on interest only this year, not $200, not $400, my friend. It's insane. You don't that realize that. <laughs> Dude, you would be paying TJ 900 bucks. I don't like bucks, that. Dude. <laughs> Look at this. Holy this is hell. money that you will be throwing to the garbage by just continuing to carrying those shit credit card debt. <laughs> okay? We don't want that. We no. want to take care of those ASAP. Yes, okay? sir. So what I want you to do, I want you to take this and I want you to trash it because that's what you're going to do if you don't take care of your situation today. So this is what I've been doing. <laughs> Pretty this much. This <laughs> is what you've been doing. No joke. <sighs> but this, my friend, here, some of this is the interest that you've accrued through some of your expenses at the bar. That's crazy. With the cigarettes and all of that. Because what you're seeing here is that while this, you know, maybe $35 bar drink, you're paying this drink, you know, 1.5 times. It's actually 50 bucks for the drinks. Right. For the Mini Mart crap cigarettes, you're paying that probably 1.5 again. It's, it's $40. Phew. 
your expenses, they multiply without even you realizing. Right. And that's what people, sometimes they don't get. They're like, oh, it's okay. It's just cards here. Take my card. No, when right. you have the cash in front of you and you realize that, uh, 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 and people, what, they don't want to pay that. Seeing what looks like a small number on that interest rate too is not what a lot of people are thinking. You know, 27% is really high, but some people are looking at that like, that's a low number. It's not that bad, right? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. A good investment on the market, on the stock market, returns about 10% a year. Here you're paying freaking 28%, dude. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We want to get yourself out of this and we're going to take action together. Okay, so we are back here uh, with our friend TJ. A very tricky situation because uh, you don't have much accessibility to debt. If shit hits the fan, I'm f***ed. <laughs> you're f I am f***ed. So we don't want that. Nope. How do we structure this? And we're going to do it together. All right. There are three poles that I want you to focus on. Your needs. This is money that you need to freaking survive. Your wants and the gold. The gold is the best one. This is money to invest and to save. Okay. And also to pay by your credit card debt. Okay. Gotcha. In your needs. Right now, you are lucky, my friend, that you don't have a damn car. And you don't have a damn rental payment. But this is temporary. At Very any temporary. time, this can quickly shift on you. Right now, today, your needs, TJ, sum to 1050 per month. <laughs> this is how much you need to live bare bone. And I'm including your phone, your minimum payment, $200 worth of food, a little bit of your subscription crap that I've seen here, but it's not too much. And that's it. Yeah. Nothing else. You're not buying clothes. You're Correct. not going on uh, to buy uh, cigarettes or any of that crap with that amount. Okay? That is 49% of your income. Yeehaw. <laughs> we want it to be below 50, which is good, but it's not good. Why? Because you're not Can't paying a dime on rent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. If you have Added rent, another you're... another expense, it's over. <laughs> Add another expense, it's over. You want... Mm -hmm. And here I'm being very mindful. Your situation is a mayday. Yes, it is. You need to get yes, your stuff back in order. However, I am being reasonable in my approach because I know that sometimes having an addiction is not as easy to drop instantly like this. So I can't say, hey, today you have zero for your wants. You're never going to do that. You're right. not going to follow my recommendations. Let's be honest. Right. Especially How with mental health in the, in the account. <laughs> yes. However... You need to cut down on all of this here tremendously. It is going to destroy you if you don't take action today. I am giving you not one cent more, and you manage the way you want, I don't care, $100 for your wants. That's it. You manage your uh, beer consumption and your cigarettes as you want. To me, I would try and go little by little, less and less, right. okay? Or you can establish a process that I like to recommend sometimes. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't, like, for example, um, you know, thinking like drinking. You know, I casually drink like anyone, right, right. very uh, responsibly. Personally, I'm not a drinker at all. Right. But what I do is when I do, I tend to drink only if I am surrounded by a person. Mm -hmm. I don't drink on my own. Okay, it's kind of yeah. a behavior. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I know. A, that's where I the know. issue always, and that's what they always say. They always say that that's where it starts. You don't realize that it's such a big issue until you're deep in the hole with it, and you and your then own. you don't want to go out to drink. You want to drink alone, like that's and no. it's snuck, it sneaks up real fast. No, and that I'm not saying oh Scott going to the bars and so on. Right, right. But it forces you to right. think before you act. Be more accountable. Because it's easy to go to the fridge and pop open a beer. It's mm. different to say, oh, shit, I need to maybe go and socialize before right. that. And not socialize at $40 at the bar. Huh? You see what I mean? Just put, it's kind of, and it can be this for you. It can be anything for anyone else. Nobody mm. is perfect. But I want right. you to start thinking financially about the cost of your addiction, which is here, and not even bringing you to how much that will cost you if you were to invest that money instead. Right. Here, every year, you're wasting tens of thousands of dollars that you could have at your retirement if you were to invest that money instead. Right. Okay, so any small decision that you're doing today, TJ, any small decision has a multiplied effect by the time 
you want to use that money in the future. That's kind Correct. of the components around time of investment. At 26, you should have a base that is going to grow. You have zero. So zero goes to zero. We want to start growing base little by little and then build yourself into something solid. Which leaves me to my last section. And I know this is going to be freaking tough. Let's do it. You need per month to save $1,000. Is that realistic? Um, well, if, if I take care of the, uh, the extras, the unnecessaries, if I cut down or even cut them out altogether, I mean, yes, it is possible. My last apartment, I was paying 1000 a month, and I was doing it semi-consistently until that I got robbed. But <laughs> There you go. But you see, mathematically, it is possible. And as you exit with me at the end of our show, I'm going to show you exactly how I split your expenses so you know where this is going. Okay? Okay. Once you have that $1,000, I need you to start paying back those credit cards ASAP. Okay? I want you, as much as you can, to s find a way to get back into your mental balance. Because to me, all, a lot of those behaviors here seems to be justified by what you mentioned. And with a balance, you can get back on the train. I think it might be difficult for you to get to that $1,000 if you're still in that imbalance. Right. Okay? So do everything you can to get back into this. If you're able to get yourself back on the train, let's say five months, you are debt-free. Five months. That's not bad at all. That's not bad. I was expecting a way longer time no, than that. No, but that is because you then are being mindful of your case. Five months is not crazy. We've seen people right. sometimes in our recommendations, they go for 28 months. It's another race. Yeah. Five <laughs> months is a sprint. Yeah, it's pretty aggressive, huh? <laughs> Once you're past that fast five months bracket, point number three, and I want you to start looking at this ASAP as well. Increase your income. Today, you're doing about 40 hours at Taco Bell. I hear that. Is there any other work that you can take on the side that will potentially increase how much you earn per month? Well, I've I've been pretty established in the restaurant industry. There you I go. used to work at Applebee's. I exposed for two of the $4 million years they had at the Yakima store. So um, I'm pretty rooted in the restaurant industry. I'm comfortable in it. The only reason I'm working at Taco Bell is because it's walking distance right now. I see. And I, see. I mean, I'm downtown, so I have options. I just have what a hard time. What about public transportation? I mean, I could. I could. Yeah. Actually, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> the <That's>, bus, dude. <laughs> but yeah, if you have higher income outside of your walking distance, but you can use public transport like millions of people do every day, right. and you pull $25 an hour instead of 17 or even 20, dude, you're gonna hit that thousand much easier. So I counter though with the bus schedules because it's most of the time our bus stops running at seven. Okay. If I'm working in the restaurant industry, anybody who works in the restaurant industry knows you're not getting off until after that. What time about morning usually. shift at uh, one of the fast foods that you used and to it, manage? Well, in our town, in our town, a lot of the morning jobs are taken by a lot of single parents, and it's just a demographic over there. Most of the morning jobs are taken by established employees already. That those are prime hours, oh. so it's really, really hard to find a good morning job that's not just, you know, a POS job that nobody wants to work, which is why it's open. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How much does POS pays? So being a ranch hand at the fairgrounds, that pays about minimum wage, I think, fifteen seventy five mm. for shoveling horse crap all day. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> And that's the opposite direction of where I want to mm. you know, be going. <laughs> okay, this is what I want you to think. Public transportation could be tricky, but you could potentially make it work. Another alternative, you buy yourself an electric scooter. Oh, I saw those rolling around town. This is going to cost you around $350, okay? This gives you an area around you of a couple miles without pushing it too crazy. Right. But it's going to multiply the opportunities that you may have walking distance. Okay. Okay. That's a good thought. Because I need you to 
increase your income no matter what. You can't pull that for too long. Right. You're going to survive, but if you don't have a uh, house, you're screwed. Correct. Maybe think about investing into a $300 electric scooter. Don't buy the, don't buy the Rolls Royce. I have one that I have probably 700 miles on it. I used to run it all across town when I was young. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's worked perfect in snow and everything. Okay, <laughs> and that co is going to potentially increase the geographic area right, with right. which you can the reach. Work. Yeah. Exactly, because reach to you is key. Once you've increased your income and you get back into a mental stability, oh, I don't want to push it, but try to stay at your friend as long as you can and potentially offer to help. Okay, maybe right. give him, I don't know, $200 a month. I've already tried, man. He won't take it. He just says help around the house. I would feel better if I was pitching in, honestly. Either you give your best to help him out around the house or you insist. You're like, man, I really want to help you out. Right. Here's the $200. Give me six months. But I want you to find a certain... Sticking point. Exactly. Okay. You need a sticking point. You need an anchor. That way it's not... Exactly. <laughs> because if you're down. still moving around, it's not going to help for your water. mental health. <laughs> Get an anchor. Give yourself That's a timeline, a date, and an horizon. Because then you are now accountable. You're not just roaming the ocean. You see right, the island. Right. You're targeting the island. Right. And then start building an emergency fund. Okay? This is money that you're going to put into what we call the high-yield saving account. Okay. It's going to allow you to fight inflation. Okay? You're going to put that money on an account. It's being invested, a very safe investment. You're going to literally, little by little, start building yourself back up to the point at which, once you have a little bit of an emergency fund, you buy yourself a car. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> once you have a car, that's it. My Lamborghinis don't get very far. <laughs> exactly. You have a car, you have total geographical coverage, you have opportunity for additional income, DoorDash, Uber Eats, all of that crap. But don't buy a brand new car for fifteen, twenty thousand no, dollars. I never do. I always keep it within reach. So get yourself into a car situation, and then that's it. After that, progressively start looking at having an apartment. Start looking at rebuilding your credit score, which will be rebuilt if you take all of those actions. Your life is back on the train. You're fortunate. That you haven't completely fall off. Yeah, my damage control isn't very effective, but at least I haven't dug myself the You haven't dug yourself holes. too much. Not impressive on paper, any of this right now. But, I mean, I still feel like this is achievable. It is, dude. Couple months, it's a sprint. So this is what I'm going to do with you. I am coining you back in one month. In one month, I need you to have paid $800 off your credit card. Okay. In five months, I called you. You no longer have credit card debt. <laughs> it's going to be a sprint, man. It's a sprint. It's, a it's sprint. probably going to be uncomfortable, but I need to get this reined in. This is not sustainable, and I've let it go way too far. Yeah. I'm tired of being at the bottom. Do you shake my hand today that you're going to take action in five months, your credit card debt free? Let's do it. All right. Dude, I put it in my calendar and I call you back. Huh? All right, let's do it. And you have my call back in a month. I'll even answer the phone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so um, overall here, I feel like I have a really good grasp on what's going on with your situation. You seem a little bit like a, a lost soul, a bit, but you've got it, dude. You have the knowledge, you have everything. You're gonna get back on track. They didn't kill my charisma, dang it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well, uh, happy end of discussion with you, uh, TJ. I hope that this was uh, very fruitful for you and that you were able to kind of have a good grasp on what's going on around your situation. Yes, sir. It helped, it helped me get a little more of a grasp on it because without having it all down on paper and being explained detail by detail, 
it's kind of hard to sort that all out in your head. You know, you get overwhelmed and you shut down and don't think about it. Yeah. So I feel a lot more aligned now. I feel like there's a path and I'm not just, you know, trudging through the bushes. Exactly. So you have a path. We'll be providing you with all this information by the time you end this call. Um, I'm happy with our discussion and with the depth at which we went into your situation, which was not easy. Um, and we hope at home as well that you guys are being inspired by uh, the courage of some of our uh, individuals coming to the show. It's not easy to come and say, ah, oh, did you have uh, 20 bucks on your account or minus 20 in your case. <laughs> but you have the guts, you have the courage, and you're going to take action. Thank you very much, guys, for following us on this uh, journey. We invite you to please like and subscribe. Every like helps us tremendously as we continue to grow this channel. And we hope to see you next time. A bientôt. Hi, Romain. It's been a while since my time on Finance Action, and um, it felt really good to have a plan put in place to hopefully get me back on track. Um, unfortunately, since my time on the show, I haven't met my goal of $800 paid off in my credit card debt just yet, but I'm working towards it. Um, I have $580 down so far, so we're making progress, you know. Something is better than nothing in the, on that front. I see my life taking a positive course now, and I hope to keep it continuing with my advice in hand that I took from the show. Um, so hopefully everything turns out how I envisioned it turning out, which is, you know, better credit score again, and then all my debt paid off. So thank you again for taking me in on the show and um, helping me, you know, sort out all these financial issues I've had. So I'm doing well. I hope everybody else is as well. Um, and thanks again.